Hi, I'm Daniel Mettler from TUSIC Internet Solutions in Switzerland. We're the makers of Too Sexy Content, the leading content management plugin for DNN. And in this short video, I'd like to show you how to get around understanding a little bit what the connections are between designed content and the template and how to find all the places to do the configuration for this. So it's about designing content on DNN and designed content is sometimes also called dynamic content, structured content, or even just sexy content. So let's go ahead and look into it. Basically what we have is we have information, the content, and we have a template which is used to visualize it, which says the title has this color, etc. And that will generate the output, namely the title with that color. And if we look at content in general, then it's important to understand that we always have a content type. What I'm trying to explain here, these are the fields that a piece of information can have. The content item is more or less the data of this information, like the ID, the title of it, the parts of it, like the texts, the pictures, etc. And of course, it can also refer to other content items. It can refer to files, which are then displayed in the right positions and things like that. So it's important to understand that there's a content type, which is a bit like the schema, or if you're used to using tables, it's kind of like the columns in a database. There's the data, which is the content item itself, and each person will have a content item, each little block of information will have a content item, each blog entry is a content item, and you have languages. In this example, almost everything is not translated except for this, which has a different image, whereas the category in this specific case for this piece of information has the English term tutorial, which is also the fallback, it has a German term Anleitungen and a Chinese one which I cannot pronounce. And of course, in a language which is not translated, it would fall back to English. So that's the thing about the content itself. Now let's look at a template. A template is like a designed piece of output with placeholders. That's it. If you then combine it with the content, this is what it'll turn into. And if you look at the HTML itself, it'll like be some image tags, h1 tags, etc., just with a bunch of placeholders so the system knows where to put the information. And this, of course, is very easy to customize if you're a web designer and your content editor will be able to enhance it with information without breaking anything. So let's look at some live demos so you see how to get around. Basically, you must make sure you have a DNN and a 2Sexy installed. And if you don't have that, then go to twosexy.org slash learn, where you'll find step-by-step -step tutorials to get this all set up. So you will also have to log in with host permissions because what I'm gonna show you now usually needs elevated rights, which let's say an editor shouldn't have. So let's look where to manage the content types and items in a live walkthrough. I'm gonna change over to a normal website and this is all content items this is a content item this is one 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 and let's log on with elevated permissions so now we're gonna have all these hovering buttons in here and just for the sake of the standard demo here I'm going to close the edit mode because that is the most common way of working with it and this is the learn page containing more tutorials now let's go to a simpler page containing just a little bit of content which has been templated perfectly to be responsive and fit this page. I could of course edit the content here, just like you always would in Too Sexy. I can of course change what it looks like by trying a different template setup for example. Not necessarily very useful, but here's where things get more interesting. For configuring things I will go to the settings. And the settings are always on this button here. And in here, I can manage my data. Data means content types and content items. Each content type here, you can see an own row for it, like the content type employee. And in here, you can manage everything about it. So let's look at managing the content type first. To do that, aside from being able to create a new one, you would usually go here where you can manage what fields exist. In here I would say it has a title, I have an employee code, I have a first name, last name, and things like that. I can configure this any way I want to, working in here. For example, I could say that the additional notes should maybe be not just a kind of a, a basic string, but maybe I would like to say that it is actually 
um, a WYSIWYG field. And then it is a WYSIWYG field. I could change the labels. I can reorganize them and do things like that. This is what I can do here. If I want to create a new employee, I have a fast way of doing it here. Click on the plus, here we go. Or I can just click on the row itself and manage the employees that I have. The table will show me all the data that has been already in there. You see these are the columns, the fields, and I can of course manage anything from here. So that is the content types and the content items and where I can manage them. We're talking about managing here, so don't forget, if you want to edit them, you would still usually do it directly in the page. So let's continue with our next steps. Because what about the templates and the views? There's two things I need to understand. The first one is that I need to say there is a template and I'm going to call it picture on the right or something like that. And then there's the code in the template, the placeholders. That is a separate step. So let's walk through that. First of all, you remember that we can always access it through here and go to the admin section. But sometimes this toolbar doesn't exist yet because the template doesn't have a placeholder for the toolbar. And then the system will not know where to put the toolbar and you'll think, gosh, how do I get to the admin section? So in that case, you will then switch over to edit mode. And in these DNN buttons that you've been used to, you will also find the admin section. So if you're missing those buttons, put them in as soon as you can. I'll show you briefly how to do that in a moment, but otherwise you can get to the same dialogues here. The templates are also called views and you can find them here. So data is where we were previously and now we're going to go to the views. Here too I have defined each view. For example, this is a view with the image on the right side and it's a third width, of course, until the responsive behavior changes that or anything else. So for example, here's a template for employees. And in here I can say, this is what it's called. This is the language for placeholders that I'm using. Could also be tokens, for example. This is the file where it is, because this is just a text file on your DNN. You can even edit it with a notepad later on if we want to. Then I'm going to say what kind of information, what kind of a content type that I'm going to visualize. This is important because otherwise it doesn't know if this content has a first name or a title or a body or a category. This is all dependent on the content type. And if possible, you should say what the demo item is because this will help the users get a preview without them having to edit data first. So here I can manage the, the views and the templates. I can also change permissions, I can delete them, but this is not where I edit the code. So let's look at the question of how do I change this? How would I add a picture placeholder into here? And so for that, let's continue. This is what we just looked at, configuring a template. Now if we continue, let's look at changing the source code of a template, like the placeholders. Now, of course, you have to first have a template on your screen so that you can edit it. And you can go through the inline toolbar, which I'll just show you in a moment. You can go through the DNN menu, or you can even go through the file system. So let's do the practical way, and um, I'm going to leave edit again. And in here, click on that. What you will see is it opens a new window. This is because if I would do anything in here, let's say I'll just add something like just some text. I pressed control S. I can also hit this button here. I want to keep this open because here, if I now refresh this, I want to see what the end result will look like. So here it is. By keeping the dialog open, I can undo it now, save again, switch over, test it, and everything should be fine. What you'll also see here are a bunch of Sherlock snippets. They're called Sherlock because they're kind of smart. They know that I'm showing this kind of a content type. They know things about DNN and about users and things like that. They have a lot of intelligence and I can like say, okay, let's show the body right here. In certain cases, it'll provide you with additional snippets and this will things make things much easier. I'm not going to show the body now, but I'm going to show the title just so you see what adding a placeholder does because now I should see the title both once here and once above here unformatted. Of course, I'm going to undo this now, save, refresh, that's it. 
So this is how you get around working with a system. It's fairly simple once you understand the concepts, but it, you may run into some problems like, yeah, where's the menu? I don't find it. And then it's good that you watch this video. So let's continue. We just looked at the basics of editing a template. You're going to use value placeholders and toolbar placeholders. Let me just give you a short demo of that. For example, if I would like to add a toolbar right here, I can say, well, toolbar, that's it. Save it, refresh, and now I have a non-floating toolbar up here as well. It does the same thing as this one, it just doesn't float. To make it float, I could, of course, use this snippet with a floating toolbar, and here, X, Y, Z. So now, if I mouse over the X, Y, Z, I should see that floating toolbar. See, it appears here now. That's the first one. The other one is the one that floats over this entire big section. Again, let's undo this. This was just for demo purposes and I'm actually working on a live site here. So this is how it works. And it's also always easy to switch back and forth and get a preview. So summarizing it up, you need content, you need templates, and you get the output. It's very easy to do. And now you can just take care of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and doing the things that you care about to make things right. So next steps for you are learn more. There's a lot of tutorials, a lot of step-by-steps -step and videos on 2sexy.org learn. I recommend that you start small and just start by tweaking existing things before you create your own solutions, just so you get the hang of working with 2sexy. And of course, start with content first because it's simpler. And then later on, move to apps, which are more sophisticated and allow you to export a functional block in one chunk and re-inject it into a different site and reuse your logic. That would be like creating a blog, creating tiles, creating things that are more sophisticated, like catalogs and things like that. So thank you for watching. Daniel Mettler, Tusic Internet Solutions from Switzerland. I hope you liked it. Please give us some feedback in the discuss section below and just enjoy. Thank you.